Kinase. Protein Kinase. What is Protein Kinase? A protein kinase is a kinase enzyme that modifies other molecules, mostly proteins, by chemically adding phosphate groups to them, that means phosphorylation. You can see the right figure here, the protein and when in presence of protein kinase, this protein is phosphorylated. That means inactive protein become activated in presence of protein kinase. That times ATP converted to ADP. That means adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate. And this signaling regulate like this signal in and signal out on and off as you can see here. When signal in, uh, in presence of protein kinase, APP, that means triphosphate, give on phosphate group to the protein and then active this enzyme. And when protein phosphatase enzyme, in presence of this enzyme, on free phosphate group is removed and then again inactive the enzyme. Welcome back to Amir Hamja. I hope you all are well and passing a good time. Today I will talk about protein kinase A in short form PKA and protein kinase A is activation by CAMP and it involves GPCR that means G protein coupled receptor. This G protein contains three subunit alpha, beta and gamma. When a ligand binds to this GPCR, then it signals to the intracellularly and activate the alpha subunit and then the downstream signaling. So first of all, I will talk about uh, protein kinase. What is protein kinase? A protein kinase is a kinase enzyme that modifies other molecules, mostly proteins, by chemically adding phosphate groups to them, that means phosphorylation. You can see the right figure here, the protein and when in presence of protein kinase, this protein is phosphorylated. That means inactive protein become activated in presence of protein kinase. That times ATP converted to ADP, that means adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate and this signaling regulate like this signal in and signal out on and off as you can see here when signal in uh, in presence of protein kinase APP that means triphosphate give on phosphate group to the protein and then active this enzyme and when protein phosphatase enzyme in presence of this enzyme on free phosphate group is removed and then again inactive the enzyme Phosphorylation usually results in a functional sense of the target protein by changing enzyme activity, cellular location, or association with other proteins. Protein kinases are enzymes that regulate the biological activity of proteins by phosphorylation. A specific amino acid ATP as the source of phosphate, thereby inducing a conformational change from an inactive to active form of the protein. Those are the function of protein kinases. There are so many types of protein kinases. Protein kinase A, protein kinase B, protein kinase C. As you see here, the function of protein kinase A is it acts as a catalyst, enabling catalyzes the activity of intercellular proteins. Also, they regulate glycogen, sugar, and lipid metabolism, and adipocyte, myocytes, and hepatocytes, phosphorylates, acetyl CoA, oxalase, and pyruvate dehydrogenase, acetyl CoA, liposenesis, nucleus, accumbens, neurons, translate, and dopamine signal into cells. Protein kinase B, it means AKT, there are AKT1, AKT2, AKT3 and they have also different kind of function. So as today I will talk about the protein kinase A, so let's skip this. So proteins and the cyclic AMP signaling, the most ligands responsible for cell cell signaling binds to surface receptors on target cells and then intercellular signal transduction. The surface receptor regulates intercellular enzymes which then transmit signals from the receptor to a series of additional intercellular targets. The proteins and cyclic AMP signaling 
The targets of signaling pathway frequently include transcription factors. The targets of signaling pathways frequently include transcription factors. Ligand binding to a receptor initiates chain of intercellular reactions, ultimately reaching the nucleus and alternating in expression. G-protein coupled receptors are the largest family of cell surface receptors. Signals are transmitted via one nucleotide binding proteins, that means G-proteins. Receptors have seven membrane spanning alpha helix. In this figure, as we can see, the outside of the cell that contains the N terminal and inside of the cell contains the terminal domain. And this four is alpha helix is total seven, and this is called the G protein coupled receptor. So this is the structure of a G protein coupled receptor. Binding of a ligand induces a conformational change that allows the cytosolic domain to activate a G protein on the inner face of the plasma membrane. The activated G protein then dissociates from the receptor and the signal to an intercellular target. G protein were discovered during studies of cyclic AMP means CAMP, a second messenger that mediates responses to many hormones. A G protein is an intermediate intermediary adenylyl cyclase activation which synthesizes CAMP. This figure hormonal activation of adenylyl cyclase and hormone responds to the receptor that means hormone acts as a ligand and when it binds to the receptor then inner side of the membrane of the cell contain G protein and this is contain three subunit alpha beta and gamma and this three subunit in presence of this hormone alpha subunit is activated and that is called the activated G protein and this activated G protein binds to the adenylyl cyclase and then it produces the CAMP in presence of ATP. G proteins and cyclic AMP signaling also, G proteins have three subunits designed alpha, beta, and gamma. G proteins have three subunits designated alpha, beta, and gamma. They are called heterotrimeric G proteins. To distinguish them from other guanine nucleotide binding proteins, such as the RAS proteins, the alpha subunit binds guanine, which regulates G protein activity. In the inactive state, alpha is bound to GDP in a complex with beta and gamma. Hormone binding to the receptor causes sense of TP or GDP. The alpha and beta gamma complex then dissociate from the receptor and interact with their targets. Regulation of G protein. As I explained before how they regulate. A large array of G protein connects receptors to distinct targets. Addition to enzyme regulation, Z proteins can also regulate ion channels. As for example, action of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine on heart muscle. Heart muscle cells have acetylcholine receptors that are Z protein coupled. Alpha subunit of the Z protein inhibits adenylyl cyclase. The Z protein beta gamma subunit open potassium channels in the plasma membrane, which plus heart muscle contraction. Large family of G protein coupled receptor are responsible for odor detection and recognition. Genes encoding odor and receptors were cloned in 1991 by Bock and Axel. Odor and receptor are encoded by a family of hundreds of genes. Key experiment of the G protein coupled receptor and as you can see here the alpha helix role of TMP as a second messenger was covered in 1958 by Sutherland in studies of epinephrine. It signals the breakdown of glycosin to glucose in muscle cells. CMP is formed from ATP by adenylyl cyclase and degraded to AMP by CMP phosphodiesterase. In this figure, we can see ATP in presence of adenyl cyclase, it produces cyclic AMP and cyclic AMP phosphodiesterase in presence of this enzyme, it converted into the AMP that means adenosine monophosphate. 
effects of CMP are mediated by CMP dependent protein kinase or protein kinase A. We call it PKA. Inactive form has two regulatory and two catalytic subunits. CMP binds to the regulatory subunits which dissociate. The free catalytic subunit can then phosphorylate serine on target proteins. In this figure, you can see the regulatory subunit and catalytic subunit. This all are called it protein kinase A. Subunit of CMP is binds to the regulatory unit that time the catalytic subunit is activated and then it will activate its the downstream signaling. In glycogen metabolism, protein kinase A phosphorylate two enzymes. Phosphorylase kinase is activated in turn activates glycogen phosphorylase which catalyzes glycogen breakdown. Glycogen synthase is inactivated so glycogen synthase is blocked. This figure you can see the regulation of glycogen metabolism by epinephrine. In presence of epinephrine, when it binds to the receptor, then it activates the G protein, it produces active, activated G protein, and then it phosphorylates. In presence of epinephrine, the receptor ligand molecule binds to the receptor, and G protein is activated. Then alpha subunit is dissociated from alpha beta gamma complex. Then presence of adenyl cyclase ATP converted to CMP. Then CMP binds to the regulatory subunit of kinase A and then activates the catalytic subunit. This catalytic subunit phosphorylate activated phosphorylase kinase and then activated phosphorylase kinase again activated the glycogen phosphorylase. And this is the enzyme. In presence of this enzyme, glycogen converted to the glucose 1-phosphate. So this is the glycogen metabolism by epinephrine. Binding of a hormone molecule leads to activation of many intercellular target enzymes. As for example, each molecule of epinephrine activates one receptor. Receptor may activate up to 100 molecules of G proteins. The proteins then it stimulates adenyl cyclase, it catalyzes synthesis of many molecules of CAMP. This molecule of protein kinase A phosphorylates many molecules of phosphorylase kinase, phosphorylates many molecules of glycogen phosphorylase. Many animal cells increase in CAMP activates transcription of gene that have a regulatory sequence called CAMP response element that means CRE. The free catalytic subunit kinase A goes to the nucleus and phosphorylates transcription factors CREV that means CRE binding protein. Phosphorylation of CREV leads to recruitment of coactivators and expression of CMP inducible genes. Regulation of gene expression by CMP plays important roles any aspects see heavier. This figure will clearly understood about the inducible gene expression in presence of cyclic AMP. So in presence of hormone, when it binds to the receptor, then alpha subunit is activated and then activate the adenyl cyclase which P converted to CMP, then CMP binds to the regulatory subunit and protein kinase A from Tamaric protein kinase A dissociate the active site, active catalytic site, and then this active catalytic site from cytosol to go into the nucleus, and this active site also phosphorylate the CREV, and then in presence of coactivator, gene transcript. This is the pathway. Protein kinases don't function in isolation. Protein phosphorylation is rapidly reversed by protein phosphatases, which terminate responses initiated by receptor activation of protein kinases. These are the function of protein kinase. This figure is enumerate the regulation of protein phosphorylation by protein kinase A and protein phosphatase 1. On my first slide, as I show you the on and off mechanism. This is the same. 
CMP can also directly regulate ion channels. It is a second messenger in signaling. The function of CMP function of CMP can also directly regulate ion channels. It is a second messenger in thin smells. Current receptors are Z protein coupled. It stimulate adrenal cyclase leading to increase CMP. It opens some channels in the plasma membrane leading to initiation of a nerve impulse.